prospecting activity on the African continent has increased sharply in recent years. It's estimated that around 20% of the world's oil and gas production will come from Africa. That's by the year 2020. Let's find out where the opportunities lie, particularly for junior producers. We're now joined by Bradley Surf, who's vice president at SACWELL. Thanks so much for your time. Obviously, the prospects are great. Energy security is on everybody's mind. For you, where are the opportunities in Africa? Well, Africa is a big place and there's a lot of new geological basins that have been explored in, mm. in the recent years. In the last 20 years, I'd say there's been a lot of focus on West Africa, mm. particularly uh, the Niger Delta, as well as the Gulf of Guinea. Yeah. If you also look at the east coast of Africa, there's been big discoveries, particularly in Mozambique, related to gas, mm. as well as the very prolific Albertine Graben in Uganda and yeah. Talo's success there. So if you look at, in terms of opportunities for, for new players, new entrants to the market, there's certainly still opportunities in the mature areas mm. on, in West Africa. And there's definitely opportunities in the Albertine Graben as well as West, East and West Africa. With all these opportunities and the fact that obviously we've seen Africa record something like 127 billion uh, barrels in reserves, the issue yes. is why all of these are untapped? Why are the investments slow in coming through? Well, it's a, it's a combination of, of, of a few things. Firstly, it's fiscal stability. Investors, specifically oil and gas majors and the small independents, they like certainty. Mm. And if there's any uncertainty, they tend to stay away. Mm. Also, Africa has been plagued by political instability, instability as well. And also, Africa is a big continent. There are a number of geological basins and a lot of places to explore. So what's happened in, 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 the, in the last couple of years is that political stability, there's been, it's been more stable. The fiscal environment has changed as well. And there's also been a reduction in political yeah. instability. So what's happened now is that those markets are now opening up and that's why in the last five to ten years you've had uh, the big discoveries in the Albertine right. Graben, you've had East Africa opening up as well as West Africa like Ghana where there's been the big Jubilee discovery. Right. So there's continued changes in the fiscal environment and countries are now mindful that they need mm. to attract investors to these prolific oil Okay, provinces. within that context though, there are also regulatory issues and you talk about certainty. Nigeria's much delayed petroleum industry bill has got many investors quite worried as to what uh, deregulation means in that particular economy, for instance. In Kenya, they've issued over 18 prospecting licenses and to date, there's no success. So even when uh, governments are mindful of the opportunities, they're still very, very slow in terms of just opening up that space. What does that create? in terms of challenges for operations? Well, in, in terms of, of the operations, one needs to be mindful that there's a value chain in terms of oil and gas, specifically the upstream value chain. Mm. So firstly, in, in, in new basins, you need to go through that value chain. So the first part is the exploration, then you go into appraisal, then you go into development, and then you go into production. So typically, in, in Kenya, it's a, it's a new graben, it's, an, it's a new play, and investors have come in, They've relied on the fiscal certainty. Mm. They're now looking at exploration. Exploration timeframes are, are generally uh, one to five years. Once they've made some, uh, they've identified prospects and uh, they, they're comfortable with the prospectivity, mm. they now go and they, they sink some serious money into that. Then what happens once they find these uh, oil and gas deposits, they go into development and production. Obviously those oil and gas deposits need to be commercial. So they also need to be, yeah. besides the, the, the general geological aspect of it, right. there needs to be the commercial aspect that needs to make sense for oil and gas companies. Let's talk well. about that because uh, the FTSE oil and gas index shows that there's renewed interest now in junior miners as opposed to the traditional players. We've seen investment growth of 20%. But when market conditions change, it's the junior miners that are hammered effectively because a lot of them are at the exploration phase. We don't see productive assets. Some would say that's a similar situation for Sackwell. How do you make an investment case in a market like this? Well, certainly for Sackwell, uh, being a junior as well, we definitely a bit different to most of the other entities and companies listed on the on the FTSE. We have distinctive South African and African DNA. Mm -hmm. We listed on the JSE, and we also listed on 
on, the, on AIM in London. We have an African identity, and we're trying to use this now to build a balanced portfolio for Sequel. So what you'll see from our operations, we have operations in, in the DRC, on the, in the Albertine, the very prolific Albertine Groben on, on the DRC side of the Groben. And there, if you look at what's happened on the Ugandan side, there's a billion barrels of resource mm. discovered. So Sackwell, what we've done is we've gone into acreage, we've gone into areas that have the potential for large and prolific discoveries yeah. of oil and gas deposits. But that hasn't really convinced a lot of investors. They'd like to see those assets prolific, and this is why the share price has been so volatile. How do you respond to that kind of sentiment? Well, uh, overall, the markets have been volatile, and, and, and Sackwell has been part, part of that uh, uncertainty as well. Our, in terms of the fundamentals, nothing has changed. Our operations are continuing. In the DRC Block 3, we've brought on a, a partner, Total, who are very serious mm -hmm. about moving the asset uh, along the value chain. Mm -hmm. So we, you see that we have exploration, the, the assets in the exploration phase. So now you need to mature that asset by, by working the asset and doing certain things in order to, to generate value. Mm -hmm. So we're moving from exploration into the appraisal phase. And then once we have uh, an appraisal opportunity, we then go into a development opportunity. All right. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time. Bradley Thank you Surf, much. he's Vice President. At